guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over the Toro Greensmaster Fletch 21 that we recently picked up off Facebook Marketplace. And I'm going to tell you what all we did roughly uh, to get it going and uh, we're going to backlap it today to uh, make the bed knife in the reel and sharpen it. So I've had this mower in a million pieces. I decided that when I picked it up, I was going to go ahead and just take it all apart and go through the whole machine and see what was wrong or what needed to be uh, repaired or replaced, put it back together. That way I have a good uh, peace of mind about the machine being ready to uh, mow all summer long. Okay, so I knew this mower probably had some issues when I first looked at it because it had oil, what I thought was oil, all over the whole front of the engine. And there was grass and dirt and grease. Everything had collected to that sticky oil and it, this thing was a filthy mess. So I knew there were some issues with it. But um, when I got home, I degreased it, I pressure washed it, cleaned it all off, and then I started to disassemble it and see what problems it had. And what I found was over here where the gearbox mates to the engine, there's four studs and bolts that hold the gearbox to the engine, and there's a gasket in here because you have a separation of engine oil and transmission fluid for the gearbox. And what I had found out was three of the four studs were broken off the engine side. There's studs right here with a, with a bolt and that's what pulls the, the gear case and the engine together. Three, or four, three of the four were broken off. So there was no longer a seal here and it was just pouring transmission fluid out and all the grass clippings and everything was collecting and it just, this whole front of this engine was black and covered in, in grease. Okay, so when I saw um, that issue, I went ahead and took the engine off the machine and cleaned everything up. And then I got into the engine a little bit. Um, I replaced the valve cover. I adjusted the valves. I replaced this little breather hose, the air filter, the fuel tank was um, had a bunch of debris in it, so I cleaned all of it out. And from the, the gear case leaking, the recoil starter, the whole inside of this was gunked up. So this must have been leaking for years because when I pulled this off, this recoil starter could barely even turn. It had so much debris and, and grease in it. So I cleaned everything up and um, got the engine, you know, good shape. I, I changed the oil as well. Once the parts came in uh, from Toro, I got a new gasket and new studs and new bolts so I could put this back together and installed it all back on the machine. And um, the handle up here was missing. Uh, there's, a, there's an access port right here and there's a spring and a ball in here for a detent. And that's what gives you this like nice crisp, like clicking, positive engagement. This was just totally floppy and loose when I got it. So I replaced all of that. Um, I simplified the wiring for the lights because it was like a total rat's nest. And then I installed a switch to turn the lights on and off. On the cutter head, I had to re-drill and tap these holes here. And I had to replace the bronze bushings uh, on this bracket down here. And that was pretty much it on the cutting head. Everything else looked pretty good. We will see if it needs a bed knife uh, once I backlap it, sharpen it, and test cut it. I replaced the spark plug as well on the engine. Also, there's um, nylon bushings in, in these four areas right here, front and back. There's eight bushings, and those were all worn to the point to where they need to be replaced, so I replaced all of those as well. So today we're going to use um, 120 grit pin high uh, back up in compound. You can get this off of Amazon and I'll put a link below so you guys can check that out. But it's water soluble. It, it goes on easy. It has really like consistent abrasives in it. And also um, you can hose it off real easily to, you know, once you're finished. So you can take a look at this. It's five pounds and this will last a while even though I cut a lot of grass. So the whole point of backlapping a machine is to mate the reel and the bed knife surfaces together 
um, and to sharpen them, like hone them, um, so that it'll give a nice scissor-like cut. And the way you do that is you'll go ahead and you'll flip the machine up on its back. And you want very light contact between the reel and the bed knife. Like it, uh, you could always go more, but you want to start off with very light contact. And on this particular model, there's a nut over here that you can attach the drill and socket to, and you'll spin the reel in reverse while you take your paintbrush and brush on the back lapping compound. And you'll know because of, of the way it sounds uh, that you have enough contact between the reel and the bed knife. And as those uh, two surfaces wear away and mate together and their abrasives break down, it'll, it'll also get quieter. And at that point, you could turn uh, the contact between the reel and the bed knife a little bit closer. And you'll just do that a couple of times and then you'll hose the machine off and then you'll um, give it a test cut with a strip of paper. kind of like a gel. But you'll start off, you'll just get some evenly across the reel. And the only time this reel should be spinning forward is when you're cutting grass. If you're just doing service to it, you should always spin it backwards. So on just a couple of these blades, we'll put some compound on it. And make sure you get all the way to the edge of the rail and you'll start to hear it in a second how it sounds it's like liquid sandpaper and 120 grit is like middle of the road it's not too aggressive and it's not too fine it'll give you a really good sharp edge on these blades okay so we're almost finished there what we'll do is we'll start up the drill and as we spin the reel at a, just a, a good speed not too fast not too slow just a decent speed you'll just keep working the backlapping compound on the reel back and forth Okay, so I can tell that it needs just another click of um, contact. It's barely even touching. So we'll try one more click there and start again. And you could already tell if you look really close, like it's making that like real bright, shiny metal. You know that's taking a little bit of metal off. So I'm gonna click it closer, one more click. Then I'm gonna put some more compound on it. You can't use too much. It's just a matter of you would be wasting it if you put too much but it won't hurt the machine.
preferably you would want a long handled brush, which they do sell, um, because naturally you don't want your hands or fingers close to a moving machine like this. Okay, so at that point I would check this. Um, I feel like I've uh, mated those two surfaces together pretty good. The reel looks like it's cutting. Uh, it's pretty shiny all the way across. There's no like mist spots in it. If you have a low spot, you would have to keep going and take it down further until it's totally flush all the way across. But the next step is to hose this off because um, it, this product is abrasive. So if it goes the other way, you're gonna be reversing and doing damage to what you just did. So I'll take it outside, hose it off, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so we're back. I hosed it all off and um, dried it with a blower. And now we're gonna do the paper test. This is just a strip of uh, paper, one inch wide, and this will tell us how clean the mower is cutting. So if you can get down here, you can see, cuts just like scissors. And you'll test that across the whole bed knife. I mean, there's no, fr I mean, it's, it's literally a scissor cut. Um, at this point, it's ready to mow minus um, you want to adjust your height of cut. And then once you do that, it'll be ready to mow. But we'll do that in the next video. So I hope you learned something today from this video. Um, this is a standard service thing that has to happen with all real mowers in order for them to function and cut properly. Uh, if you have a Toro, this would be kind of a how-to guide. But every real mower is going to have this same general um, process or idea of the bed knife and the reel, and the contact and back clapping and all that. So um, that's it for today, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.